In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Joshua. And Joshua is one of the most fascinating and I think probably one of the more underrated Bible characters, in my opinion, to really set the stage for what's going on here. This is in the very first chapter of Joshua, and Moses has just died. Now, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of an Israelite. You're an Israelite. You've been a slave pretty much your entire life in Egypt. And then you see this guy named Moses. Now, maybe you were a little kid, or maybe you were like a young adult when he showed up on the scene. Now it's 40 years later, and, and you're a full-grown man. You met this guy named Moses who has been leading your people out of Egypt, and you saw the ten plagues take place. You saw him sweeten the waters. You've seen him get water from a rock. You've seen the sea split and walked on dry land. You've seen all these amazing things. And your whole life, except for the, the brief part at the beginning where you were a slave, your whole life, the only thing that you've known is following Moses. Now, ideally, what was in your heart is that you were following God and seeing Moses as his representative, and that's why you were following Moses. But the point is, you don't know any other leader. I mean, you think about this. Put, put yourself in these shoes. Let's say that we had a president that had been president for 40 years. And he was a president when you were a little kid, as far back as you can remember. All you've known as the leader of your people is this guy. And here you are, a full-grown man with kids of your own now. And that guy has died. Can you blame the Israelites for being a little anxious and a little lost? I, I don't think you can. I think it's perfectly understandable that they got some anxiety and they're not real sure what's going to happen here. We, we've been so used to Moses for so long. And this Joshua guy, yeah, he, he seems like a great guy, but, I mean, come on, he's not Moses. And then... Joshua reveals this speech from the Lord to Israel, and this is recorded in the very first chapter of his book. This is from Joshua 1, 8 through 9. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may care be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You see, I've heard this verse so many times throughout my life. I go to people's houses and it's up on signs. They've got it painted on the walls. It's a very popular verse. And I've seen this verse my whole life so many times that that I, I just know it, and I, I don't really even think about it when I read it. When you put it into that context, it has a lot more depth than just the raw words. And the words are beautiful, don't get me wrong. There's a reason this verse is popular. But ultimately, it goes so much deeper than that. When you put yourself in the shoes of an Israelite. How does he start out there? By talking about the book. The law is not to depart from your mouth. You see, this is the theme that's behind this whole exchange between Joshua and the children of Israel. It's not me. And it's not Moses. Yeah, Moses was the representative. And yeah, I'm the guy now. I'm just the mouthpiece. It ain't coming from me. Everything that we've been through, the miracles, the speeches, the way of life that we've made for ourselves, it all came from God. And so, don't be afraid. Don't be freaked out about this. You were following God before when Moses was in charge. You're following God now. God's the one that matters, not me. 
And Moses was a great leader, and, and sure, I'll try to do the best that I can to live up to that. But ultimately, you have to remember that it's God that's the one that's with us, and it was God that was with Moses, and he's the reason that all those things happened. So now, of course, what really matters is not whether I'm in charge or Moses is in charge, but that God is in charge. And that's really what he's trying to use to sway the doubts to try to instill in them a sense of, okay, we are going to be okay, and everything is going to be all right, because God's not going to leave us. He didn't leave us before. He didn't leave us to rot in Israel or in Egypt. He didn't leave us when the Egyptian army had us cornered, and he's not going to leave us now. Even if, God, if, even if Moses is gone, God didn't go with him. And so that's part of what he's trying to do to comfort it. And I, I love this part. The way that they are to know that is to look at the law, because that's their commonality, isn't it? That if we want to follow God, if we want God to look down favorably on us, all we have to do is follow the law. It's not about people. It's not about Moses, and it's not about Joshua. It's about God and his commands and his relationship with us. That's what counts. And so Joshua's first bit of advice is, don't let the law depart from your mouth. You do what the law says, you act accordingly, and you'll be fine. And by the way, be courageous and brave and, and be strong, because God is going to be with you when you're trying to accomplish this purpose. So really, this is broken up into three different parts. This command is broken up into three different parts. First is to learn. We have to study God's law. We have to, as the scripture says here, meditate upon it daily. And of course, what that means is we're supposed to think about it. We're supposed to look deeply into it and try to figure out what it is that God wants from us, the attitude, the lifestyle that he wants us to live. And once we've done that, then we've accomplished the first part and can move on to the second part that Joshua talks about, which is act. You'll notice that after we have been able to speak the law and we have the law in our heart, we're supposed to do what it says. Knowing the law is great, but if you don't actually do what the law says, it doesn't do you any good. If you see a speed limit sign that is 75 miles an hour and you go 90, are you really better off than the guy that went 90 and didn't realize that it was 75 miles per hour? Well, in practice, no. I mean, I guess it's good that you know that, but it didn't really do you any good and it didn't stop you from endangering other people by ignoring the law. And so it's not just knowing the law, it's also applying that to your life and trying to conform your own life to the laws of God. And then finally, the last part of that is persevere. You learn the law, you do what the law says, and then Joshua gives them some encouragement on being able to accomplish this task. He's saying, yeah, keep going, be strong, be courageous, press on, move forward. Why? Because God is with us. I get that it seems daunting. I get that what we're about to do, invading the land of Cana, taking away their land, that's going to be real hard. But we'll be fine because God is with us. And that is a sentiment that is eternal. Because isn't that the same message that Jesus gives to his followers? Understand my teachings, understand the law, meditate upon it, then go forth and do it. Be good to your brothers and sisters, be good to your fellow man, do my will, spread the gospel, and persevere. Don't just do it for a little while, and then the second you meet resistance, throw your hands up and be like, ah, I tried. Oh, it's, it's really scary, and I don't think I'm strong enough to do it. No, that's, that's not okay. Be strong and courageous. God wouldn't give you this task if you weren't up to it. And that's true of us today, too. That's true of us today, too. When God tells us to do something, when he gives us a command, he does that knowing that we can accept it, knowing that we can actually follow through on it. When he tells us to obey Christ and to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, he's not just saying it as some pie-in-the-sky idea. We can actually do that. And he does not leave us ill-equipped for the job. Yeah, charging into battle is a scary thing to do. It takes courage. It takes strength. And that's why God tells us to have those things. But 
we should realize that these, there is no reason for us to be afraid, that we can be strong and we can be courageous because we know that just like in Israel, the Lord is with us today too. Stay the course, friends. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.